Hello. In this edition of Refining Your Pilot Skills, we'll be looking at approach management and specifically flying stabilised approaches. Now, in fixed wing aviation, it's long been standard practice to monitor carefully that all approaches are stabilised. But in the helicopter world, this practice has mostly been limited to the offshore industry. But perhaps there are some lessons for us all to learn here. The particular circumstances of offshore approaches means that much of the time, and almost always at night and in reduced visibility, there are very minimal visual references to help us judge distance to run, closing speed and relative height. So there's an absolute need to fly standardised approach profiles which can be carefully monitored for safety to make sure critical parameters such as vertical speed and airspeed are appropriate for the distance to run and the height above the landing surface. So what are we looking for for an approach to qualify as stabilised? The exact parameters will vary depending on the operator and the type of helicopter, but these are the generally accepted requirements. Firstly, the helicopter needs to be on the correct flight path, so not in conflict with any obstacles and as far as possible into wind. Power, attitude and heading selections need to be such that only minimal changes will be required on the approach in order to keep the helicopter on the correct flight path. The helicopter needs to be correctly configured for landing with all briefings and the before landing checklist complete. And the rate of descent and airspeed of the helicopter need to be within specified target parameters. Careful management of the approach speed is particularly critical, especially when the pilot's visual references may be limited only to the helideck or helipad itself. Imagine a helicopter making an approach with excessive airspeed. As he gets closer to the helipad, the pilot realises the error and commences a flare to reduce the speed. Any significant nose-up attitude will have two undesirable effects. The first will be that it will interfere with the pilot's view of his only visual reference, the helideck or helipad. In addition, the nose-up attitude means that the pilot's remaining view of the landing surface has now moved down in his field of vision, making the approach feel too steep and causing him to reduce power and increase the rate of descent. Now consider an approach where the pilot allows the airspeed to reduce too much too early. There are a number of threats associated with this situation. As the helicopter speed reduces from VY, it may need significantly more power in order to maintain altitude. If the approach is not monitored well and the pilot doesn't increase the power, the helicopter may start to descend towards the surface. In addition, low speed can cause some flight director modes to disengage which in turn will make it more likely that the helicopter will depart from the correct flight path. Another real threat comes from allowing the airspeed to reduce below takeoff or bolt landing safety speed too early. In this situation, a loss of power from one engine may well cause a drop down and unless there is a clear overshoot path, it's likely to result in a collision. One way to help us to achieve a steady deceleration and descent and stabilise the approach is to use a concept of notional gates. The gates are a series of points at decreasing range to the landing surface during our approach and at each point we have target parameters to achieve of airspeed and height. The example shown here is purely to illustrate the concept and doesn't necessarily show the procedure for any particular helicopter. If we can pass through each gate at or close to the given parameters, then it will naturally channel the helicopter to arrive at the landing decision point in a suitable state to allow it to continue for a safe landing. An extremely common error which pilots make on helipad approaches is selecting the wrong aiming point. If you draw a path from your eye line to the centre of the helipad, you will always arrive with a helicopter at the near edge. Just remember that 90% of the helicopter is behind you, 
so you need to intercept a path to the far edge of the helipad in order to arrive in the middle. The idea is that the operator will choose a point on the approach which they will define in their ops manual depending on the environment, type of approach and type of helicopter. This point is normally defined either as a distance from the landing point or as a height above the landing surface or instrument approach minima. At this point, the crew needs to confirm that the helicopter is stabilised on the approach, so meeting the necessary criteria. If the approach is stabilised, the crew will continue the approach. If it's not stabilised, they must go around. Before reaching the point at which the approach must be stabilised, on a multi-pilot operation, the pilot monitoring can assist with achieving the correct parameters. He does this by using a set of standardised deviation callouts to alert the pilot flying when there is an adjustment to be made. The exact format of the callouts will be decided by the operator, but they may be something like this. Check speed. Speed is 100 knots. Check rate of descent, descending 1,000 feet per minute. On reaching the appropriate position, the pilot monitoring will call out either 500 feet to go, stabilised approach, or 500 feet to go, not stabilised, go around. One of the key aims is to avoid the unfortunately very common situation where pilots press on with an uncomfortable approach instead of starting again. It's important to get away from the perception that going around from an approach is a sign of incompetence, whereas in fact it could be seen as a sign of good pilot judgement. If you've seen our video on threat and error management, you'll recognise that this is a particular application of the same concept. It's a way of mitigating the threats associated with approaches in some of the most difficult visual environments, and also of minimising the errors in the setup and handling of the approaches. I hope you found this video useful. If so, there are several more available in this series for you to use or share as you wish. Check out our website at www.focuscrewtraining.com. Bye for now.